Good afternoon, everybody. This is Bart from MultirotorForums.com. Today we're going to start our review of DJI's NASA M version 2 uh, multirotor flight control system. A uh, standard part of a product review has become the unboxing, so that's what we're going to do first. After this, we're going to talk about the features, and uh, in the next couple of videos, we'll talk about uh, setup and installation, uh, flying and tuning. Uh, we'll do a summary video when we're all done, and then as an addendum to that, uh, we'll do uh, a demo of the features, and that's probably going to have to wait until the weather gets a little bit nicer, but uh, we'll put that in there at the end of the review thread at some point. So for now, let's just get the box open and see what's inside. Here it is. It's about three and a half inches by about five inches. Uh, this has the GPS, so it's all going to be in there. Oh, what was that? Moving right along with our review of the NASA V2 uh, multi-rotor flight control system from DJI. Uh, this is what's contained inside the box uh, when you open it up and empty it out. Um, the first thing on top of the box that you'll take out will be the GPS receiver. This GPS puck, as it's called, also contains the uh, magnetometers. Those enable the NASA to sense the Earth's uh, magnetic field and to determine compass headings. Being able to do that improves the NASA's performance and also enables certain features that we'll talk about uh, a little bit later on in the review. Also with the GPS puck you get this stand for the GPS receiver to sit on and some sticky tape to attach it to the stand. Underneath the GPS receiver next in the package would be the NASA unit itself. This is the flight control system right here. Everything else here, uh, this other stuff, that's all accessories that help the NASA to do its job. So this is your flight controller, okay? On the left side you have inputs, on the right side you have outputs. Outputs are for the motors or for the ESCs that control the motors. There's six dedicated motor controls and then there's two, F1 and F2, that could either be used to control motors or to control a two-axis uh, servo-driven uh, camera mount. Okay, these other inputs on the side, we'll talk about those as we go, but for now, that's your flight controller. Next in the box would be the NASA's PMU, that's the power management unit. On one side you have a red and black wire, those get uh, power directly from the batteries. The NASA can take anywhere from a two to a six cell battery pack. Inside this PMU, it regulates that power down to 5 volts, and with this wire, which goes into the X3 port on the side of the NASA, it provides power both for the flight control as well as the receiver for your RC system. So, battery power in one side, 5 volts out the other to power the flight control and your receiver. This other wire that comes out of the PMU is the EXP wire, or expansion wire I think it means, and that goes right there. So there's an X3 port and the EXP port, those are both where you plug in these two wires from the PMU. The PMU also has a port on the side where the GPS antenna plugs in, and the CAN bus port, which is where you would plug in either your uh, Bluetooth module or your uh, H3-2D uh, brushless gimbal for your GoPro. Next in the box, as you're unpackaging uh, its contents, you'll have the remote LED. The remote LED has a single LED surface mounted. It's very bright. It's capable of displaying multiple colors. And the NASA uses that LED to communicate with the pilot what the condition of the helicopter is. So if the helicopter's got a low voltage condition or if you don't have enough satellites to maintain a GPS lock, that LED is going to flash certain colors and certain patterns. Knowing those patterns and the colors involved uh, is very useful when you take this out, when you start setting it up, and especially when you're out flying. On the end of the remote LED is a USB port, and that's what you use to hook up the NASA to your computer when it's time to set it up. Also in the package in these Ziploc bags 
you have a spare USB cable so it's a it's a USB to micro USB about two feet long and then DJ DJI is also nice enough to provide you with some short servo wires that you can use to hook up your receiver to the NASA flight controller. Okay, you could use those provided you're not using like a Futaba S bus, in which case you would only need one. All right, so that's the contents of the box. Next, we're going to talk about the features. So, what features are included with the NASA V2 multi rotor flight control system? Uh, first of all, you have three different flight modes manual, ADI, or attitude, and GPS. The NASA also has intelligent orientation control. Uh, there are enhanced fail safes. One of those uh, modes would be where the helicopter will climb to a safe altitude when it goes into a fail safe condition. It will fly back to the point that it took off from and then auto land on that spot. There's nine configurations programmed into the NASA. There's two quadcopter configurations. There are four hexacopter configurations and three octocopters. The NASA also has the ability to control a two-axis servo-driven camera gimbal. It accepts standard receivers, SBUS, and PPM. Built into the NASA's control uh, setup, there is a voltage monitor as well as low voltage protections that can be set up. There's an advanced IMU calibration function. And then there's uh, PMU extensions available. Uh, the first one is an on-screen display, that's the IOSD. That enables you to overlay uh, critical aircraft uh, information on your video display that you see in your goggles or on your monitor if you're flying uh, with an FPV setup. Another extension at the PMU, that's the one we talked about already at the side, the CAN bus port, that's the H32D. That's a brushless GoPro gimbal, and we're going to talk about that in a separate product review at multirotorforums.com. And last but not least, you can uh, attach a Bluetooth module. And with that, you could do remote tuning of the uh, control system. You could also use the free DJI uh, ground station software that enables the NASA V2 to fly waypoints. So those are the major features, the components we've spoken about that are included with the package. And that concludes our first video. So thank you again to Aerial Media Pros for uh, sponsoring this uh, product review. The next video we're going to talk about installation and setup.